I guess KZ must have been like dynamic dual drivers. Dual, <laughs> shit, <laughs> dual dynamic drivers. That's cute. We'll just have to make one with five. What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews and today I'm looking at the KZ E10 True Wireless Stereo Earphones. These babies have got five drivers per side, a single dynamic driver and four balanced armature drivers. Bluetooth 5.0 comes with aptX or aptX support. The price is about $60. That pretty much covers the features. Oh, they've got uh, they've got sort of these preformed silicone ear guides. So they don't they're not just the earpieces that sit right in your ear, but you've got that extra ear hook as well, which which makes the fit feel a lot more stable and very secure. So these would be good for working out, uh, going to the gym, running, things like that. The only problem is nobody knows what the IPX rating is. So we don't know how water resistant they are or sweat resistant. But uh, general rule of thumb, all, all the other Bluetooth earphones that I've tested and tried have all been like IPX4 or 5 which means they have basic sweat resistance, they can withstand a light rain, things like that. So I'm sure they'll be fine for sports and, and working out and things like that as, as long as they don't get really fucking splashed or you're out in a monsoon or whatever, you'll be fine. Well, let's have a look inside. There they are. Really nice build, very nice build quality, especially when you consider these are only 60 bucks. And for what you're getting, it's actually pretty good. There are some caveats that I'll get to, but for now, let's have another look at the earpieces. This is the charging case, of course, it's, it's rather large. So, the build quality, you can probably tell just by looking at them, it's, it's really nice. You've got this aluminium lower part here, I believe that's where the, uh, the battery is, and the Bluetooth module. This part is uh, rubber silicone, so it's quite soft, it's flexible, and they just sit on your ears like that, feel really secure. The shape of the shells is just like a regular wired in-ear monitor, so they're super comfortable. And another thing I really love about these is they have a regular type of nozzle, so for people like me who need to use custom or, you know, the, my own personal ear tips, this is a godsend because I can. it's easy to tip roll. So that's the build. Super comfortable. Nice construction, good materials. What else have we got? Let's talk about the case real quick. It is kind of big. It is pretty chunky. But that's <clears throat> that'll easily fit in your pocket. It's about the size of a bar of soap. Easily fit in a pocket. Definitely fit in a bag or a purse, whatever, no worries. The ear pieces sit in there like that. Now when you want to pair these, you have to actually keep the earphones inside the case and there's a little button there, I don't know if you can see it, but you have to hold this button for three seconds until it flashes green, then you know you're in pairing mode and you're good to go. Once you've paired with your source, you can pull them out, they will automatically connect with each other and then you just go ahead and play your music from your source. Uh, all right, so let, let's talk about the good things first. Like I said, build quality, comfort. The case is pretty good. It is big, but you know, it is plastic, but it feels quite durable. It's smooth. Um, why does smooth matter? Well, because it goes into your pocket easier. It's USB type C. There's a little LED indicator here that, char that glows red when it's charging and blue when it's fully charged. Magnetically sealed lid, 
So no, no complaints there. These have got a really tidy base, a punchy, tidy base. They've got a pretty good sub bass rumble. It's very controlled. It doesn't, it's not a boomy sound. It's not a, a bloated sound. It's very clean bass, but it is quite powerful. Uh, so that's a, that's a strong point. The mid range is, it's typical KZ. Uh, if you're familiar with KZ, well, typical with a lot of KZ because it doesn't apply to all of their models, of course. But this is similar in the mid range to their recent models like the AS16, the ZS10 Pro, the ASX, etc. Fairly thin in the mid range, a little bit dry in the mid range, but it's fine, you know. The, the clarity is excellent, voice articulation is very good, and the sound is very clear, but it, it could use a little bit more warmth to, to sound more natural, to make the tone sound more natural. Again, the treble is sort of typical of, of recent KZ stuff. It is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit dry again. It's a bit chalky. The timber is a little bit off. It's not great. And the other thing uh, uh, that's about the sound is the upper mid range is quite boosted. You might be fine with it. For me, it gets pretty fatiguing, especially when you turn the volume up a bit. The upper mid range, it, it gets a bit shouty, it gets a bit, a bit harsh, and uh, mm, could be better, but again, 60 bucks, you can't complain too much. All right, so that's some of the bad points. The, really, the real kicker though, is the Bluetooth connectivity, and that's my biggest gripe with these earphones because the audio, the Bluetooth signal keeps cutting out. It doesn't, it doesn't drop completely, it doesn't dis disconnect, but it will cut out briefly again and again, quite regularly. Uh, even when I had my phone or my DAP sitting on the desk right in front of me, the earphones would still cut out even without turning my head but they were more even more likely to cut out every time I've moved my head as well so that's that's the big issue with these I don't know if everybody will have the same experience you'll just have to uh, check out some more reviews and find out what the general consensus is whether it is a, an issue or if it's just me I don't know so yeah the connectivity is a problem the upper mid-range is a bit glaring, it's a bit fatiguing. Um, while the sound is very clear, that upper mid-range boost makes percussion sounds very sharp, like the leading edge of percussion instruments, uh, even kick drums, snares, things like that. They sort of, they've got a really slam, they don't, they don't thump. They, it's more like a, it's kind of like a clap more than a, a solid hit like that. That can also be quite fatiguing. Um, it's not a real big issue. The bass is actually quite good. But if they could just tame that upper mid-range, that would uh, make a lot of difference, in my opinion. I'm no expert, of course. That's about all I've got to say. Um, I think the sound is, is okay. If you like the KZ AS16, for example, you're likely to enjoy the sound of these. If you like the KZ ZS10, you might like the sound of these. The treble is, I find, a little bit not quite as good as the ZS10. It's certainly not as good as the treble on the ZSX. I think if KZ continues with this form factor, and they just refine it a little bit and release, uh, you know, an improved version of these in the future. I think they can absolutely be stellar. But until that time, I would probably go for something else like the Shanling MTW100, maybe one of the Astro Tech, but probably not the S80 because I got frustrated with the touch controls being so sensitive. 
look, if you're a, if you're a big KZ fan, it's probably worth taking a risk. But like I said, check out some other reviews, see if this connectivity issue is happening for a lot of people or if it's only a few people. And if you think it's not going to affect you, then go ahead because they do sound pretty good and they're very affordable and the case is okay. And that's all we have for these. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more reviews like this, hit the subscribe button and until next time, See you later.